Hello everyone, Donna Don here with the next update on the War Corsair project. Today I'm down at the airstrip back at uh, Port Meadville. I'm here working on the brakes. I got my new Matco master cylinders in. You can see there's one there, that's the left pedal. And probably can't see the right one, but they're all in, fitted. Sorry, hitting the zoom. <clears throat> so I got both of them in there. Just got my phone down there, lighting it up so you can see it. So now I'm ready to put it back together. You got your fuel pressure sending unit, fuel line, return line. Um, then you got your sending unit here for the tank, fuel flow level. So, and the uh, turnbuckles down here that attach down inside. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back together. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and start working on the tail wheel. Uh, finish that up. I was here earlier in the week, Monday, Tuesday, working on it, and I had to uh, make some uh, little blocks put in the tail section. I'll show you those uh, a little later on. So, so stay tuned. I'll be right back. Okay, everybody, I'm back, uh, but it's no longer Saturday. It's not even Sunday. It's not even Monday, but Tuesday. Um, all right, let me start off by I did have another part of this video to uh, put on after this but it was taken outside and it was really windy at the airport yesterday, Monday. <laughs> I was trying to finish up this video <clears throat> after working on this stuff all weekend. But I was at the airport all day Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. I did probably five, six hours Saturday, uh, at least four hours on Sunday, and, and I was out there probably four hours yesterday, Monday. So, but uh, in the first part of this video, you did see that I changed my master cylinders out. Uh, this is the original one. You can see it's a lot bigger. In diameter it was a one inch diameter I got lucky and that the uh, the new one had the exact same fittings exact same thread size so I was able to take my long fork off of this and put it on the um, Matco brake assembly and I was able to get my length I needed with it screwed all the way on it was just like this one was uh, and then I did have to come in and grind the bottom to get it to fit in the holder on the bottom so I got that all done so the brakes worked really good. Now they actually move over an inch before you can really start feeling the pedal pressure work. These didn't move at all. You know, they were pumped up solid. So uh, I taxied it around Sunday after I was working on this stuff and uh, the brakes felt much better. But uh, now I had to push the pedals too far and my feet were going too flat. So I had to adjust the fork on this higher. I raised it a quarter of an inch, and since there's a two and a half to one in there, that moves the pedal uh, five eighths of an inch back on me. So it brought it back to where now it's in a pretty good spot. I'll run it there for a little while and see if that works. But that's where I was at at the first half of this video. Okay, so now I went outside and was trying to make another video to explain the tailwheel uh, problem that I ran into and the wind was so noisy you couldn't even hear me talk so I had to chop out the first few minutes of that video and then the rest of it will be tacked on after I finish telling you what I ran into but overall the, uh, the airplanes running fine okay this was uh, version 1.0 this was the very first one I made and that's the one you saw on the tail wheel assembly right here on this bench and the problem with this one was <clears throat> I made this width here, the center of this, the width of the tail wheel assembly itself. And then the, the retract linkages, rods that come down and grab the wheel, that's what these grooves are for, uh, they're half inch square tubing. And so I made it to this width and just made these a half inch. Well, when I took this down there Saturday to put it in, it was too narrow uh, out here. The, these forks were farther apart than I had allowed for. So I had to come in, bring it back home Sunday and grind all this out to get this in there to work. And, uh, or no, it was still Saturday. I tried, I worked on this beginning of the last week it was, and then I took this down this weekend and put it on there. And it, uh, I couldn't finish it because I needed some blocks like this with a hole drilled in it. Well, the blocks I took down were only three quarter wide by about two inches. Uh, and it turns out it wasn't wide enough because the, this tubing would have had to come clear out here on the edge. So, so I couldn't finish up the installation Saturday. So I wasn't happy with this one, so I carved out another one. I still had the file in my computer. So I carved this one out and I made it, I got the prints out and it should be three inches out here to the outside of these legs. So I made it three inches. Remember this one was too narrow. 
they're all dimensionally the same on the outside. It's just the difference in the width, uh, the spacing of these, how close these are together, how far apart. So I made it to print, which would be three inches outside the outside. So I took this one down there, and lo and behold, that's too wide. So now the forks that come in here, I had to spread them apart to get this on. And then one, this center fits over there nice, and the wheel turned nice, but by spreading this thing out, it caused uh, it causes this plastic to deform just enough that it puts some drag on that tail wheel from freely spinning. But I hooked it all up, and then I got these blocks installed, two one on each side. They're like two inches long. Screwed them into a piece of plywood back in the tail. So these these things come in, and then they push through the hole like so into this, and that's what holds this end solid. And the other ones are locked in down here. So got that all done and. Took it out to test it. You could grab the rudder and you could move the rudder and the wheel would spin, but it was reluctant to turn because it was uh, too much friction on there. But once I got out and started to taxi it, these springs were too soft for that and all I was doing was compressing this spring without really moving the tail wheel. So the tail wheel wasn't steerable yet, but I could still ride the brakes and it still worked like it normally would without it. So, so I took the airplane out Sunday and I ran it around for solid 15 minutes or more uh, with this one. This one I never tested because it was too tight and then this one was too tight the opposite way. Too narrow, too wide. But I made made this go on but it was tight and it caused a tension problem. So, so I uh, ran it around for 15 minutes because I was more curious about seeing if the airplane was going to overheat. I've never run this engine long enough in this configuration to see if it's going to overheat or not. So, so I ran it for 15 minutes. I taxied from my hangar back all the way down to the hangar by the flight school. I did that like three times. And then I went out to the short end of the airfield, which is the east end, and I taxied out the taxiway all the way to the end of the runway. And then going out there, there's large cracks across the taxiway. And every one of them I hit with that tail where you just hear a solid thump, thump. Thump. So I get down towards the end of the turn to go onto the runway, but I didn't want to go on the runway yet. So I hit the brakes and spun it around sideways, and the cracks go across the runway. And wouldn't you know, I turned exactly right over top of a crack, and that little narrow tail wheel, those cracks in that <laughs> pavement were at least two and a half inches wide. And my tail wheel dropped down into that crack. And I felt it drop, and I was thinking, oh, is that just a crack? And then I give her some throttle and it moved like six inches and stopped and was like, or did my tail wheel fall apart or something, you know, because I just had it all apart. <laughs> so I shut the engine off, crawl out of the plane, sure enough, the tail wheel dropped in that crack and it wasn't going nowhere. So I just picked the tail up, moved over, turned the airplane 90 degrees so it's facing back down the taxiway, fired it back up and came back. And the whole time I was out there, the temperature come up to 180 within like five minutes or so, went to 8, 185, 190. Now I know that the thermostat in that engine was at least 192 to 195, 197-ish, because uh, they're a lot warmer than those motors. So I wasn't exactly sure, but after that uh, long run time, and I was running, you know, 2,000, 2,500 RPM the whole time, and I was moving along at a, you know, a really fast walk, almost a trot phase most of the time, and uh, it finally peaked out just shy of 200, and it was seemed to be holding there and didn't want to go any higher, so I was running it. So I figured if it was going to overheat, it would have done it. But well, I got home and I checked the book, and sure enough, the thermostat was supposed to open, started opening around 169 to 176. So you're looking in the 170s, and then the full open is 197. So I'm pretty sure the thermostat is like a 195 or 197. But it was holding its own right there, and it wasn't didn't seem to want to go any hotter. And it was pretty warm out Saturday, and warm muggy. Um, today is um, it was nice this morning, but man, it is nasty out there now. It's got to be pushing 90 degrees and 80 something percent humidity. It just kicked in the last couple of hours. So anyway, so what I did is I went back yesterday to uh, readjust the brakes, and then I made the first part of this video. And now they uh, they felt better. So now then I uh, just went and I just took this right out of the airplane. I didn't even bother. So I, the taxi you're going to see at the end of this is without this in there. This is really easy to remove. doesn't affect the tail wheel whatsoever. So that's where I'm at. Um, so what I need to do is design another one of these again. But I'm going to make it out of a piece of uh, eighth inch aluminum. 
just going to whittle it out. I'm going to adjust the thing because I basically got to come in about a sixteenth of an inch on each side because this is like an eighth inch too, too narrow and this one is an eighth inch too wide. So I'm going to kind of split the difference and machine one out of aluminum make these a little wider than a half inch because I can't make these really wide because if you make them too wide when you're in there this will, this will be able to go like this and any time that this is moving the wheel's not moving. And then uh, the problem I ran into with this one, I didn't do as nice a job as I did on this one. These are in there really tight. This one here, they actually started to move, move the tubes in. I don't know if you can see it, but it was moving the tubes in like that because these ones are uh, not as tight as, as that one was. So I'm going to going to redesign this out of just a thin piece of aluminum, just cut it out, take it down there, and get it until it finally fits on there. I can just slip this in there and drop it in there, and it's nice. And then once I find that point, then I will redesign this to use, I bought, went out and bought me some Dash 3 nylon, Teflon lined braided stainless hose that to use for making brake lines. And I'm going to use this instead of this, and this will take up to an eighth of an inch cable. This is only a sixteenth inch cable. And then these ends I'm going to make a, going to make a loop on the end here. I'm going to make this stick out, you know, kind of like this, so I can drill a hole in the side and snake this through it and then I'll put another one here so this will come right up in and seat inside there and then and then this can't move it'll be trapped in there to where it can't slide can't slide like this anymore so I'll redesign it and I'll make it out of uh, uh, 3 8 to half inch thick aluminum and then I'll uh, you know put some lightning holes in it where it needs to be some of this doesn't need to be this big even these really don't need to be this long but I, they do have to have something there to keep this from turning. So, so that's kind of where I'm at with all this mess. <clears throat> but the idea was working. I did buy some heavier springs to try, but because of uh, this not working right, I didn't bother with them. I just pulled it out. Well, let me see if that was anything else I wanted to talk about. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, so I'm just going to redesign this, cut one out of aluminum, put her back... Uh, and then get it to where it actually fits and then I'll machine one out of a, a thicker piece like this. This is I think like 400 thousandths. It's not quite half inch. Um, and it needs to be a little thicker. This thick enough is still fine for this piece of tubing because this is probably 5 16 OD. Um, yeah, it's a little bigger than quarter inch. This is quarter inch, so this is 5 16 smaller than 3 8 so, but this will work fine. This is already drilled out for three thirty seconds, and I can still take it out another another uh, thirty seconds of an inch to the get to an eighth inch if I want, or I can make another one. I have more material. This is all stainless, but uh, this worked fine. Everything worked fine. It's just once I got the weight on there, it was this uh, this became an issue of too too sticky. And then where this is attached up in there. I may fear that this is against a piece of uh, eighth inch plywood that's all glued into the tail section and if you get into a point where your tail gets hit hard or something it's really going to push on this and push on that plywood to where it may want to break the plywood. So I'm, I'm thinking of putting uh, these two blocks in there or make an aluminum one that will come across the front of the spar and then it'll never, it'd have to literally push against the spar to, to break anything. So, but that's where I'm at. Uh, this here, believe it or not, this little guy here is only five feet. That little bugger was thirty-three dollars. It was over six dollars a foot. But again, it's a tough one line. This stuff's rated, you know, like two thousand psi. It's meant for making brake lines and such. So, but it's got a nice lining in it, and it should um, uh, be fine for. Uh, I'll, I'll buy some aircraft cable because it has a much finer. Uh, you can get like a seven by nineteen, which is 19 strands of seven strands. You know, you get seven strands of 19 strands each. You get wrap 19 together, and you take seven sets of those, and then you wrap it in to get your final diameter. Like this is, I think this is just all solid strand. It was um, bought at uh, Lowe's, so it's not as nice as the bicycle cable was. Bicycle cable was really nice and fine, finer than this, much better quality. But it was too short. I needed seven feet, and that thing wasn't less than six foot long. So, all right, I'm gonna end this part of the video and just throw on the last uh, clip of what I did do yesterday of me just getting into playing and taxing around a little bit. Uh, I had to cut the video short because the uh, airport manager was out there 
fueling up a, a Cessna Citation and the way the plane sits and where the meter is, he can't read it. So he come over to me during the film when I was finishing up this video to uh, ask me if I'd watch the meter for him while he fueled the plane. So I rushed the, the ending because I figured he needed something. So, but I was trying to explain some of this in the video outside, but the wind was too bad. I couldn't, couldn't hear over the wind. I did find a, a solution to fix for that on this camera so I can uh, uh, cut that way back. So, all right, I'm going to end this section here and I'll be back in a minute to, and you'll see the, the end of this video. So again, people, thanks for watching these videos and uh, hope you enjoyed. All right, I'll see you in a minute. What?
Oops. All right, folks, there we go. That's just a little quick demonstration. Um, I had it out yesterday for about 15 minutes running around. Wanted to see what the uh, water temp was going to do today. Do, and it never went over 200. The thermostat on this thing's 197 full open. That's all I want to do, get it out and run a little bit. A little too windy to play around today, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this off short. So, as always, appreciate everybody taking time to watch these videos. And as always, feel free to leave any comments, questions, concerns, and I'll answer them as come along. So for now, I'm going to get this thing put away and go home. See you folks next week. This is Down or Down Out.